support. Welcome, welcome to the call. We are, I believe, February 16th. So we're officially way more than halfway. This is a long but short month. So we're more than halfway through February. And I have to say that I have probably witnessed and experienced more February blahs than in the past. And I think I've been doing this, what, six, seven years? And I haven't seen this much um, all around. It's not just like, like, not just in the gym, not just in my, my own life. It just, I take note of what everybody's doing. I kind of look at how Facebook people trend, what they say, what they don't say. Um, I just kind of just watch it and I'm seeing everybody kind of take a little bit of a turn and we're getting into some warmer weather this week. So hopefully that's a really good cue for a turn uh, in the right direction. So why I'm on the call tonight with you guys is because I would like to share some insight on how to get it going again if you are struggling. And then I was just going to um, highlight how someone is still going. He's on the call tonight, which is excellent. So he can continue working away over there. But um, it's just pretty incredible, actually, because it's exactly what we all should try to do a little bit more of. So anyways, I'll start with why February blahs happen. Well, usually it's because when you, like I got a big window here, I can't really see outside, so I'll point at it for uh, all intents and purposes, and it's usually a cloud in the sky that covers it. So we don't see the sun very often, right? So with that being said, a lot of our vitamin D intake, all that kind of stuff kind of drops, and we just don't feel as great as we usually do when we see more of the sun. So we're just seeing usually a lot more snow. So let's thank Mother Nature that they haven't dumped, uh, hasn't dumped that much snow on us. But usually that's one of the main reasons is the seasonal depression starts to set in a lot of people. Um, we tend to forget to do the things that got us where we were before. So it's almost like you start up in January and everybody does these New Year's resolutions, which I tried to avoid so much. And that's why we did the New Year's January jolt challenge where we just got people moving more and we just really tried to stay away from setting huge goals that weren't attainable. But when people do set those goals and they don't attain them for the month of January within the first 30 days type thing, they set this crazy goal in 30 days, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And the list is like 20 things long. And that's what probably should be your yearly goals versus all crammed into one short month and they expect all these results to come. And then when they get to the 30th day of the month, near, you know, you got one more day, and then all of a sudden they're pretty beat up. They're upset that they didn't, Dougie, they're upset that they didn't accomplish what they set out to accomplish and then all of a sudden they just give up, right? They just throw it out. They're like, oh shit, it's already February, F this, and they toss it away. So that's number two. Um, number three is they either didn't do like they may have set some goals and they didn't do anything at all in January. So that not only did they try, like you got try to get them all done, couldn't, then you've got set goals and didn't do shit. So now you've got two piles of people in the same spot, but feeling very different emotions. They're like, Oh, I'll get to it next Monday. Oh, I'll start on Monday. Oh, I'll start on Monday. You know what? How many Mondays are in a year? Well, you can do the math on that one. You continually say that every single Monday, all of a sudden half a year is gone and you haven't done anything. So that starts hitting right now in this month. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting when people start beating themselves up about all of that because you get the same thing. You get just the blahs, right? You don't feel good. You don't surround yourself with um, happy people because those happy people are actually avoiding you because you're unhappy they don't want to come near you because they're happy we go over into that corner we're all of a sudden not going to be happy because we're associated with someone that just isn't quite ready yet and i want that to be something that you keep in mind the statement of are you ready or isn't quite ready yet so it's very key because a lot of people think they are but they don't set goals around it and a lot of people set goals 
that they're not ready for. So that's why we come to the same spot, even though a bunch set goals and a bunch over here set goals, we both set goals. One did some, some did none. We end up in the same spot. So that's kind of where February comes in. It's the realization that we've had over a month and a half now to understand that, hey, we're not going to basically carry out these goals. And some of them that you may have set in January have already fallen off and they're not important to you. Or maybe you've just never looked at them again, right? So let's start there. If you at all want to start somewhere, you have to start with a clear reason why. I've spoken to this in the past on calls and I can't tell you enough about why is so powerful, okay? Your reason why pushes you when you don't want to do it. And I wanna use this very simple reference. We always have to take the trash out, even though we don't wanna do it. The reason why is so powerful because if we don't, I have triplets who kept opening this stupid diaper genie today going, who? Who in here, dad? P-U. If I don't take that shit out, it's going to smell forever, right? So we want to do it. The reason why it's so strong to get everything out, once a week, we get it out. Something so simple like that. Why do we struggle so much when we want to try to bring success to our life? Why do we sit down and do nothing? Why do we write nothing? Why do we, you know, don't attain anything? Well, because we don't take it seriously enough in the very beginning. We write things down, we're kind of half ass into it and we're not totally clear on the reason why. So that is number one, okay? I'm gonna share my screen real quick. I like doing this, so let's share. And I'm gonna open up. Share the screen. Okay. Disregard when it's running, but two thumbs up is sweet. This is around exercising after a break, okay? Very easy to follow. Just start with something easy. If you're really struggling to get back into exercising, and I want you guys to refer, or I guess relate this to pretty much anything, um, but we revolve around exercising. This is called What the Fit, all that good stuff, right? So start with something easy. Everybody calls and says, hey, I wanna join a boot camp." If that's your first call and you haven't started walking, it will be hard. So is boot camp easy? I wouldn't say boot camp is easy, but if it's easy for you to get to the gym, then that might be easy. Once you're in the gym, it might become difficult because it's a struggle, that kind of stuff, lifting weights, you don't know what to do. There's lots of ways that you can research that stuff, but you need to start with something easy that you know you can do. Okay, so whether it be walking, whether it be going to a boot camp, whether it be going to the yoga, whether it be going you know, somewhere, start with something easy. Again, meal planning. Don't try to eat 35 meals a week, super clean, zero sugar. It doesn't make any sense. If you've gone from bags of Oreos and you wanna to go to bags of no Oreos, it's gonna be super hard. I can't do it, I'm struggling right now. But all the shit's out of the house now, it's wonderful. And we're gonna try this again. So start with something easy, commit to five minutes. If a long workout feels like too much, it just says commit to working out for five minutes. And then if you feel good at that five minute mark, try to do five minutes more. And then you progress on that, right? I'm like, okay, I'm not that tired. I don't even have a sweat on yet. I'm going to go five more minutes. Great. That leads to 15, 20. And obviously the compounding effect gets you to 45 minutes or more. And you don't really need more than that. We're just trying to move more so that we can live more for all the things that we have in our life, right? Remember how good it makes you feel. And this goes for everything. When you write a list at work, Allison, and you nail all the stuff off that list, how good does it feel? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. See that? It feels freaking good. When you go into the gym and you deadlift for the first time and you never thought you could, it feels pretty fucking good. Let me tell you. All right? Lots of things feel really good when you set a goal around them and accomplish that. Okay, so remembering how good it makes you feel will get you past that initial, oh shit, I've got to start somewhere, thought. Oh, this one's good. John, 
schedule it in your diary or book, I'll say. Book, not many people call it a diary anymore. Log book. Honestly, schedule it. Schedule it in your calendar. Schedule it somewhere, anywhere. Just friggin' do it. Put it in a schedule and even if you don't end up following through, at least you have a warning in there that probably says something like, hey, you should probably move warning. And then eventually you're gonna feel, I guess not, yeah, you might feel guilty. Then you should probably move. You're warning yourself every single day. I tell people this all the time. I'm shocked that I hear more of this when people say, oh, I have to go home and then I have to go to the gym. And sometimes I get home and I don't go out of the house once I get home. I'm like, there's a simple fix to that. This number five, prepare your damn gym bag and put it in the car. There's two reasons why people don't go to the gym. One, it's inconvenient. And two, it costs too much. Okay. So why don't we bring it down to one and just say, well, it costs too much and then find a solution for that. Because if you're always prepared to go to the gym and even if you don't, because it costs too much, at least you're prepared to go and do something. You could put on your Lululemon gear and stroll around the mall. No one will know the difference. You could window shop for 45 minutes at a very quick pace and not be able to tell what prices that the things are. No one cares, right? Just move more. But if you're prepared to do that at any point in time, if you see someone that's in help and you got to run to them, you can put on those shoes and gym clothes and get that extra exercise and help them because you're prepared. The second part is simple. We just do research to figure out how to break that and get the best cost effective way for you. So prepare your gym bag. See, number six, that's what we tried to do. And it did pretty well, take a one month challenge, okay? So 30 plus days in the first month, 31 days, we nailed it. We did 18 workouts and I don't know if you did the math, but that's four workouts twice for two weeks, pardon me, and then five workouts for the other two, okay? And it was anything of 45 minutes or longer to get your heart up a little bit more than normal outside of your regular daily routine, such as work and all that kind of good stuff. Very simple. Take a one month challenge. You don't need to take it with a gym. You don't need to take it with a buddy. You don't need to take it with strangers. You can create your own one month challenge. And the fact is they're trying, these challenges are trying to solidify some habits so that you can stick to them longer than the one month. But if you choose to do a one week challenge, or you see these things out there, it's like, oh, three week, four, you know, if they're not longer, then they're probably not worth it because you probably won't stick to it if it's not long enough, okay? Number seven, get an exercise buddy. Someone who's gonna call you, who's gonna text you. I text quite a few people, oh, there's one, just replied to me. I text them, I'm like, where are you? What, what's going on? Let's get a workout in, let's do this, let's do that. What, how can I help? Get an exercise buddy, they're gonna hold you accountable. You may even hold them accountable, right? So get a buddy, go to the gym. Don't just think the gym. I just said the gym, look at this thing, it's contradicting me. No, like I said before, you can go anywhere, right? We all have the ability to move. You can move in your own living room. I once heard a story that someone was heavily overweight and all they did was walk around their coffee table because that's all they could do and they lost weight. Well, if you walk around anything long enough, you're gonna lose weight. So it's as simple as that, there's no excuse right? If you can move, you have the ability to create a better lifestyle for yourself. If you can move, you can go and get the things you want. You can go and do the things you want to do. You can be creative. If cost is a problem, there's no, like, you could just go on the internet and find a workout and go do it out in the park. And if people are making fun of you for doing it in the park, well, then they're just jealous because they want to do it too. They just don't have the balls to do it. So anyways, you can go anywhere. And if you do want to go to the gym, I know a good one. Plug. All right. Do it for yourself, not anyone else. Usually someone else is telling you to do it. But at the end of the day, you have to truly do it for yourself, right? If someone else tells you to do it and you do it, oh, I think, what did I hear? I heard this week that someone said, well, I'm trying to, I'm here because... Someone asked me to come. Right then and there, I wanted to yell at them and say, well, you gotta leave. But 
I wanted to give them a shot to find out if there's a deeper meaning, blah, blah, blah. But if that's truly the feeling that you have, you're doing it for someone else or your spouse told you to work out or your friend told you to work out because they think you should, you know what? You're never going to stick to it. You have to find out why you want to do it. Let's go back to why. And then you have to find out what is it going to do for you if you do do it. Like you got to flip that script and be like, okay, if I do this, what's in it for me? Like, what am I going to get out of it? Am I going to feel better? Am I going to sleep better? Am I going to drink more water? Am I going to be more conscious of the things that I need to be conscious and aware of? Relate it to your own life. If you have kids, am I going to move better with the kids? If you have, you know, goals of running a marathon, but you don't want to run, well, you have a problem, right? Like we have to link it to ourselves and we have to put blinders on like the horse race of all the other people around you, right? Oftentimes we get freaked out when other people are watching and judging. I often try to put myself in a position where if people are looking at me, they're looking at me in order to find either help or they're getting you know, motivation from someone around them because they're doing something that they want to do. And I tend not to ever think that someone looking at me when I'm doing what I'm doing is looking at me and playing it down, being like, wow, why is he doing that or judging me? I think it's the other way around. So it's all about perspective, right? Don't let someone else take your power away from you. Do it for yourself. Okay, so with that being said, um, I don't know if John wants to come on the call, maybe for just 30 seconds. John, are you there? Sure. Yeah. Right. So we're working out right now. Can you hear me? I'm actually running and I'm going to run through this. Amazing. Perfect, perfect example. Okay, guys. Um, John basically met us through the Dad Club London. And he met us online. He came to a couple classes and then turned his, I believe it's the garage or might be a basement. It's a garage, right? Yeah, it's a shop, yeah. Yeah, your shop. We turned a shop into basically a, a man cave full of amazing gym equipment and Valentine's Day date with the rower and the bench press and all this other stuff. So, why am I bringing John on? Because he has made a choice to journal every single thing that he does, plug into a network of people that are doing things that he wants to do, and then he continues to post publicly and tag people and in a community of people doing what he wants to do. And John, can you quickly just tell me, since you've met us back in August, your success has been like how many workouts a week have you done average weight loss and why you do it so i'm just gonna walk on the treadmill to talk because i couldn't run and talk uh so since i think i went to the club the end of august for the first time i'd already been working out I was pretty self-motivated but Tried to go to Fit Club a bunch. It doesn't really work. 20 minutes away from my house. Was trying to go once a week. Was at 248 when I started. <clears throat> Took what I learned at Fit Club. Googled other things. Um, built up my home gym even more. I had a pretty solid gym, but uh, got some extra stuff like a jump box, um, battle rope, since Fit Club. Um, did the challenges that Allison set up in the fall, the ab challenge, the squat challenge, got to, was slowly going down, but not as much as I wanted to. Um, so then January came and it's funny you hit on it, Corey, about trying too many things at once. I felt like this January... I tried to do too many things at once, but I'm still continuing to do them. Uh, I got bread, rice, pasta, candy, and dessert, and alcohol out of my diet. Nice. And I'm going to try to go for 365 workouts this year. Say that again. Um, and I'm going to try to go for 365 60-minute workouts this year. Okay, I heard that right. Okay, so, that's fucked. 
<laughs> yeah. But like I said, like I've been doing this now for two and a half years. Kind of plateaued. I gained in the summer because we got a house of the pool. <laughs> the lowest I got down to was like 217.6. And I actually beat that this week. And I honestly, like, and not, Corey never asked me to come on here before tonight, but Fit Club's helped, like, meeting the other dads that go there. We have a side chat. It's kind of our accountability. It's like our, te- or our uh, workout buddy. And so, like, this week I weighed in at 217, so less than I've ever been. Yeah. Feel great. That is amazing. Um, today, it's funny that this is the to get back on track to chat, Corey, because today I was like, fuck, I don't want to work out tonight. <laughs> like, I just, I like to work out early in the day. So I was like, no, I got to, I want to go listen to the call. So I'm glad I came out and, uh, yeah, I'm just going to grind it out and continue. So my next, my goal was 215 at the beginning of January. Yeah. I'll probably hit that like next week. Amazing. And then uh, I joined another a chat group about uh, David Goggins. He wrote the book "Can't Hurt Me." Oh, and okay. he runs and talks. So there's your goal. Yeah. So next time I talk on here, I'll do it while I'm running the whole time. That's just a fast walk. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know. I saw in there a guy post. He's six foot one, two hundred five, and I was like, "Shit, that's gonna be in like ten pounds." So, yeah, I just uh, amazing. I owe a lot to to Corey and Allison and Robin and Candace. They've been the coaches that have gone to classes at Fit Club and following you guys on social media and the Fit Clubbers group, the Jag Club London group. It's all helped, and it's just the people that help you be accountable and. At the end of the day, you're right, Corey, it is for yourself. So, like, I do it for me, but my, my three- and five-year-old boys, I want to see them grow up and have their own kids, right? It's true, man. So this is the way to do it. That's pretty awesome. Now, you know what? Thank you for sharing all of that without being pre-warned because I feel like that's the best kind of share because it's super genuine. It's, it's exactly how you're feeling. You're truly sweating right now through this whole thing because you're dedicated to 365 workouts, which is incredible. And you're on the David Goggins trip, which is 75 hard and all this other stuff. And, you know, Andy, that. so you're like, you're doing all the things that you should be doing. And yes, it's a lot, but maybe it's not a lot for where you're at right now. And you've been prepared for this. So this is your almost like test to yourself to get to that next level and you're going to bring it. So I, I commend you for it. It's pretty cool. Um, I follow you. I watch your journal. You post it. I think it's awesome. You write in the book. You do everything pretty much that you've ever been told, asked, or seen, and you're seeing what works. So, do people have to do it like you? No, you're choosing your route, you're choosing your way. But if anybody takes an ounce of what you're doing and applies it to their life, they're going to be that more successful. Kudos to you. I'm going to let you get back to that run. I'm going to mute you back. So, thank you so much. And then I'm just going to you guys. So, yeah, like, just reflecting back with what he said there, um, like, I did the 75 hard challenge with a group of people, and what it was was two workouts a day for 45 minutes length, four liters of water, 10 pages of reading. Um, You had to follow a meal plan. You had to take a picture every single day of your progress. And that feeling has never been matched since doing it. And it was the hardest thing that probably I've ever done physically and mentally um, from like a challenge standpoint. Um, But I definitely can go back to that time and say that I haven't really been on par and with anything since then, other than trying to grow the business and then my crazy life back here with my three kids and everything. So it's, it's nice to see other people doing it because it's my motivation and it's something that others should look out for is to gain motivation from others, not um, feel bad that you're not doing anything because others are. Um, Use that in a different light. Turn that energy that someone else has into your energy, just like John did with all the groups. 
So you don't have to come to Fit Club. He doesn't come to Fit Club that often at all. You do not need to be part of my gym. You do not need to even pay a single dime to even, you know, be part of a community that just wants to see other people succeed. So it's out there. There's no reasons why you guys can't. There's no reason why you can't share this with people that are struggling. There's no reason why we can't grow this community to be something much greater and much bigger of an impact. And, and that's my goal. And I am going to get back on track with the, the fitness and all that good stuff. I just need to dedicate the time and that's just it. Right. Um, hopefully you guys caught that. My internet connection is not great, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's 28 minutes of, Sheer bliss. All right. I thank you, Nancy, Allison, Julie, John, uh, and everybody else that will listen to this afterwards. Um, it does go up on YouTube, so people who haven't caught it tonight can see it. So if you guys have friends, please by all means share the link when you see it. You can copy and paste it to your own wall, um, or you can send it via messenger to people who need to hear this message. Anyways, that's it. What the fit number two. We went a little smoother tonight. I didn't get disconnected, so that's a win. And uh, we heard a great story. So I thank you guys, and I wish you a great night. Bye.